and uh, that's the physics behind, for example, the other reactions. If the definition of critical thinking is the objective analysis of facts to form a judgment, how is critical analysis and rationality relevant to our contemporary world? We will explore this question with Dr. Timothy Noon from Catholic University right here in the Scholar's Chair. Let the conditions of inequality that we suffered under, when we are the oppressor, the, the dominant class, let's not impose that injustice in the others. Anybody think that you could have a just system without giving women their rights? Everyone has an opinion, and we sit around the marketplace and talk about opinion, but what is truth? With the shareholder, their goal is similar to the business, to maximize profit. That belief becomes a context for a development of knowledge. Say physics is the DNA of technology because the rules for how you build new technology starts in physics. Because Quran challenges mm -hmm. the people. It's not only the people of the book. It challenges Muslims. Thanks. We say secular. They hear godless. Right. What was intended? Watch the Scholar's Chair every Monday night. And here is your host. Welcome to the Scholar's Chair, Professor Noon. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here again. Oh, indeed. Um, the definition for critical thinking is the objective analysis of facts to form judgment. How is critical thinking and, and rationality relevant uh, to our contemporary world? Well, that's a, that's a large question. Let me, let me begin with some observations. Yes. Um, Thinking, of course, is an activity, and it can be done poorly or well. And all such activities um, of that sort have built into them a success description, right? In this case, it would be arriving at truth. So the standards of th critical thinking are the standards which don't guarantee, but uh, enable, mo make it most likely that, um, and dispose uh, people to arrive at truth through their thinking process. And that's why it can be analyzed the way we analyze it, say, in logic. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if you go back to uh, a certain kind of logic as it was first developed by Aristotle, the first thing he does is distinguishes simple terms and their definitions from propositions, mm -hmm. from inferences, and then analyzes each of those in turn. Uh, mm -hmm. Simple term, um, you know, such as justice and its definition um, from a proposition of, you know, just act should be done, or mm -hmm. this table is brown, or whatever what example we want to choose. And then um, using those kinds of propositions, which really represent judgments, in a pattern of reasoning derived at mm -hmm. a conclusion. I got you. Yeah. So critical thinking is actually a process in which you uh, uh, assess and evaluate uh, the quality of your, your thought. Right. Exactly. Yes, yes. And, uh, and what Aristotle thought he was doing, and what he, what he did do, was show that um, arguments have forms uh -huh. that, were, that can be analyzed, not unlike the way that um, natural kinds have forms that you can analyze in biology, say. Mm -hmm. um, even though they're thought patterns, they have a structure. And then when you get inside the structure, uh, the structure is either such that the premises, that is the propositions that you use as evidence guarantee the truth of the conclusion, or maybe they don't, mm -hmm. right? right? And then the reasoning patterns that can't guarantee the truth of the conclusion, those are rejected as invalid. Interesting. And then you yeah. have valid yeah. ones. Yeah, and they use valid yeah. ones. Yeah. Um, Dr. Richard Paul, um, who we've been th talking about earlier, came up with an idea of uh, intellectual standard of thinking. That's right. He, he believed that this, this structure you just talked about, it was universal. And I found that very, very compelling. Um, uh, do you agree with that assessment? Do you agree that, that the critical thinking has a universal form? Right. I mean, I, I, I think for me, critical thinking um, amounts to either deductive logic or inductive logic. And each have their own standards. They're, they're different standards, but mm -hmm. they're parallel standards. They're aiming at the excellence of the thinking in this precise sense. They mo make it most likely, or in the case of deductive arguments, they guarantee that if you begin with truth, you'll end with truth, mm -hmm. or you'll arrive at truth. Again, there's a, mo there's a measure for the excellence of the activity, n akin to the measures you have, for example, in music, mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. or in any other such activity, which can go well or poorly. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So there, there's definitely a standard. Right. 
uh, intellectual, I and mean, we talk about actually the development of rational tools here. Um, now, now, Paul goes on to talk about that one of those standards is clarity of thought. I mean, the mm -hmm. whole objective is to get to clarity of thought. And would you expand that or? Right, I mean, if I use a, a term in a way that's ambiguous, mm -hmm. then of course, I'm about to give a lecture on, on Friday, for example, and one of the first things I'm gonna start with on Friday is the concept of history. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna point out history has at least three meanings. It can mean the things that were done in the past, what I, I have a Latin word for that, and then, it can mean the evidence that survives of the doings of the past, or it can mean the stories or the narratives we tell about what happened in the past. Yeah. And these are not interchangeable, though they're, they're codependent, right? Mm -hmm. So um, and, and at least the last two are dependent on the first, right? So what happened in the past might or might not survive in terms of record, and whatever record's available allows somebody to tell a story about what happened in the past. Mm -hmm. But these are three distinct senses of history. Mm -hmm. So when people say history shows, they might mean the pattern of what happened in the past shows, yeah. or there might be the pattern of evidence that survives about that pattern tells us that the pattern was such and such, mm -hmm. or they might mean contemporary historians tell us X. Yes. Those aren't the same thing. They're not the same thing. They're right, and so, you know, getting clear on a term like history, which seems like it should just be obvious, it actually means at least three things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and, and a statement like history shows actually <laughs> could mean one of three things, right, depending on which one of these, or in some cases, people mean several of these, right? I mean, it might turn out that more than one is meant, and they might not be conscious of it. Yeah. Now, that's another phase of critical thinking, because what happens then is by talking, and having people ask you questions, you realize, oh, what I'm talking about is what contemporary historians tell us, or yes, yes. what I've got in mind is the evidence for this is such and such, and so that tells us this is what happened in the past. Yes, and then Paul Paul goes on to to ask, uh, to to extend the the requirement for universal thinking. Uh, 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 his assertion was that you must have clarity, mm -hmm. uh, and he says the way you get at clarity is, as you just said, ask questions and ask for examples mm -hmm. to, further, to further explain. Uh, metaphors, yes? Yes, uh, yeah. although um, the philosophers generally, mm -hmm. <laughs> and logicians in particular, yes. uh, and I'm both, uh, tend um, in philosophical or scientific discourse to, to eschew metaphors because mm. metaphors for us are usually uh, items that need to be <laughs> analyzed in literal terms. And so we, we're always interested, well, what's that literally say? And then, mm. then we see how much correspondence there is between the metaphorical um, speech and mm. the literal reality it's supposed to stand for. Or gotcha, it, yeah. gotcha. Now analogy is a different case. Analogy is you know, something is this is the that, is that, is the that. Now that's mm -hmm. okay, but even there, there are elements that need to be very carefully um, considered because Those sometimes analogies themselves. are not analogous, right? The elements yeah. in which the, they do have to overlap, they actually don't overlap. Yes, yes. And then you have false, let's call it a false analogy or misleading analogy, mm -hmm. yeah. And we see a lot of that in yeah. our political season. Oh yes, oh yes, <laughs> oh yes. At least every two years, and sometimes more often. <laughs> another uh, another um, element that he contributes to the universal uh, principle uh, was precision. Uh, getting down to the details of the idea. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, now, of course, I must say the position uh, definitely it, um, that, uh, th that my body temperature is a certain temperature uh, uh, doesn't um, inform you enough in terms of my wellness, right? right. It, so you have to talk about that the body temperature to be well has to be a certain temperature exactly. Mm -hmm. And so therefore precision has relevance and of course that's part of the critical thinking processing. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Um, often people not only use terms which have several senses, mm -hmm. they're, the sense of which they mean is not precise for the, what they're trying to accomplish, right? Mm -hmm. So there's often a gap there, you have to point this out, that you know that mm -hmm. the conclusion you want to get to actually isn't warranted by those premises because this concept isn't refined enough to capture what what you want, right? Yes, yes. Um, for and, example. Um, well, when people use, um, for example, um, logical terms such as validity, right? Uh -huh. Validity is a, is a term that means the strength of the reasoning form or the, the, the form of the reasoning, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas when they say the argument sound, they don't seem to understand that the term sound and logic has a very precise meaning. It means the form is valid and in fact, the premises are true. 
Mm -hmm. So it's impossible in logic for an argument to be sound unless it's also valid. Gotcha. Though it's perfectly possible for an argument to be valid and not be sound. Uh -huh. So valid and sound, though in ordinary discourse, they're often used as if they were interchangeable. Mm. A neologician will tell you, nope, they're not interchangeable. There's One's a precondition for the other. Yeah. If you don't have a valid argument, you can't have a sound argument. But if you have a sound argument, you do have a valid argument. Good, good, good yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, there's an example of from logic of how the, these terms in logic actually are very precise. because. We've been working on this for about 2,300 years. Yes, so it's we, an yeah. evolving <laughs> we, process. Isn't yes, it? It, it is. It's not isolated. Oh, no. Now, now tell me about, about context. Uh, the, uh, scholars in this particular field talk about removing con uh, context to get to the information and vice versa. You, you, can, you can actually include context in order to get to the, the truth of a matter. Right. Um, well. I mean, for sure, each subject area has its own context for inference, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And in that sense, logic, although it's a general tool for reasoning, mm -hmm. has to be adjusted to different subject matters, right, in mm -hmm. different ways. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, concerns with uh, empirical evidence, um, dating, for example, or considerations of a historian or an anthropologist has to mm. has to be very much and keep very much in mind. Yeah. It's not as relevant to say a logician or a or a physicist unless you mean natural history. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, dating is not so relevant. Gotcha, uh, gotcha. Yeah, so um, often judgments are, are contextualized in that respect, right? A certain judgment might be kind of judgment or pattern of reasoning is relevant for one subject matter. It's not very relevant for another, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, uh, as was pointed out long ago, um, part, of the you, part of the art of reasoning involves being able to make the appropriate kind of judgment in the appropriate context. Aristotle is very famously in the Nicomachean Ethics says, well, we wouldn't expect mathematical precision mm -hmm. from someone trying to influence a crowd not to do a violent act, mm -hmm. but equally we wouldn't expect just, you know, appeals to emotion from a mathematician, right? Mm -hmm. there, in other words, and, and, and his point was that the, it's part of a, it's part of being well educated or having critical thinking skills to be able to say, okay, this this is the relevant standard here. This is the relevant kind of information here. These are relevant considerations here, but not over there. Right? How does critical thinking play into identity? Um, well, I mean, you mean like gender identity, or I'm or any identity? If if uh, if I if I'm thinking in ethnocentric terms, there there is a notion of critical thinking uh, as it relates to to uh, ethnicity. Uh, if I'm thinking nationally, is there critical thinking involved with my national identity, or, or in your just your, your what you just cited, even the notions of, of gender? Well, uh, critical thinking is a set of skills or standards or canons of reasoning it can be applied anywhere, right? Gotcha. right. But, but right. it needs to be somewhat adjusted because certain considerations, for example, if you were doing political science, statistical models and their critique is very much relevant to what you do, uh -huh. but not so much in you know other subjects. Physical anthropology would have almost no role, right? Gotcha. So, um, and, and conversely, um, you know, certain structures in chemistry are relevant for certain parts of biology, but not for others. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think in general you can say this, that um, the standards of critical reasoning, although they need to be adjusted to context and, and, mm. and, and context mm. of, of discourse yeah. uh, and content of discourse, um, nonetheless are of a general value. Mm -hmm. um, I do think you can ask very interesting questions, for example, about national identity, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you, if, you, if you take national identity, it's a very curious case, because in the United States, our national identity is very much tied to our political system and its history. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you go to other countries, say France, it, it, it's a linguistic element that enters in very strongly, mm -hmm. um, and the history of that language, but also the history of the writings in that language enter into the identity of the French people. Mm -hmm. So they've radically changed several times in the last three or four centuries their political form, mm -hmm. but so their political history, though it's part of their identity, it isn't as strong a part as it is for us. Right. Now we were looking at a, uh, at a critical thinking as a universal element. We are still using these universal principles re in, in any and all settings. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's, that was that was the the whole crest of of this for me was to be able to have this tool that could be uh, used as a hammer everywhere. I, I guess that's yeah. what I'm trying to get to. Yeah, I, no, it is, it is. Yes. I mean, okay. the two major types are right, uh, deductive logic and inductive logic. That's yeah. the two major types. I Why mean, don't you, since you mentioned it twice already, uh, let's go explore that a little bit. Uh, what is deductive and, and inductive reasoning? 
uh, the process? The process is for deductive reasoning, you, you have premises mm -hmm. and you align them in such a way that you say, if one and two, then three. Mm -hmm. or, uh, and example would be, all mammals are endowed with complex nervous system. All whales are mammals. All whales are endowed with a complex nervous system. Mm -hmm. Um, if those two premises are true about the mammals and the whales, then the, the conclusion has to be true, mm -hmm. right? Because that particular form of reasoning is uh, valid. It's that valid. is, okay. So uh -huh. um, we can show that in on independent considerations and logic. That's a model deductive reasoning, mm -hmm. right? Um, but you would have deductive reasoning too. Um, you know, um, you get an example, for example, in a Sherlock Holmes story. Um, if the police report about the murder is correct, um, then there should be powder blackening on the clothes. There's no powder blackening on the clothes, therefore the police report's not correct. Yes. Uh, because of course, gunpowder creates a, a mark on clothes with it's fired within three and a half feet. And the police report had it that, that the person was shot from three and a half feet or less. Mm -hmm. And that's clearly not true, that's right? Not true. Okay, so that's a, that's a modus tollens argument. Uh, it's deductive. Whereas if I reason, you know, um, some people in this group have this feature, other people in this group have this feature, therefore all people in this group have this feature, <laughs> right. that's I'm going from part to whole. Gotcha. Some people just, right, right. right, right. So mm -hmm. long ago, when the people started studying mammals, they started taking that note of their property. So I take it a long time ago, people noticed, oh, elk, they raise live young and they've got complex nervous systems. Uh, whales do too, mm -hmm. right? Dogs do too, oh. I get it. All mammals have complex nervous systems. Mm. The, that was in, right. That was so the, the premise in the one argument was mm. arrived at inductively by examples, mm. building up to a general claim. So anytime you move from particular to general, mm -hmm. that's going to be inductive reasoning. And the different models for how to do that. Yes. Anytime you go from one general claim to another general claim to another general claim, or from two general claims to a particular claim, mm -hmm. that's going to be deductive, deductive reasoning. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So they're they're very clear. I mean. Logicians will admit that some, in sometimes when you deal with ordinary people's la reasoning, you have to ask them, what do you mean? Because yes. sometimes it's unclear in their minds whether they mean to read is in inductively or deductively. They, but they, the, the, prim the premise can be Right, challenged. it's unclear what they're saying. But yes, once you get yes. clear what they're saying, then it's going to fit one of these two that's patterns. A excellent. Right. This is what we want to give our audience, this tool of rationality. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thank you for that. That's, sure. That is one of the, the, the questions that we really want to get clarification on. Accuracy, is, is accuracy relevant uh, in, the, in the processing of critical thinking? Sure. It seems I mean, like our president doesn't, uh, doesn't appreciate yes, it. Uh, <laughs> accuracy is relevant in two respects. I mean, what you say should be conformed the way things are. That's what one of the definitions of truth is, right? Yes. To say well, that what's the, of that is that it is, and of that is that which is not is that it is not. Um, mm -hmm. So, there's accuracy at, at that level. Um, also, your speech act should, as much as possible, both express what you think and your, what you think should correspond to the world. Ideally, that's how it works. Now, as you know, many people have a hard time expressing themselves, so yeah. it might be that what they are trying to say they're not saying, or it could mean what they're thinking, which is what they're saying, is not actually correct. Yes. Um, so the accuracy enters in in that respect, because the, the old forget the overall goal of reasoning, of all reasoning, is truth, right? Mm, yes. Right. So yeah. to get to truth, you have to reason properly. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I, I can't overemphasize thinking is an activity. We don't usually think of it that way, but that's uh -huh. how it ought to be thought of. Yeah. And it has, it has inbuilt goals, right, that it should achieve, the chief one of which is arriving at the truth. Yes, uh, I, I remember Professor Nasser, uh, George, uh, George Mason talked about uh, intellect uh, in the old, the old definition of intellect was a verb. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he might have a point there. Yeah. Um, relevance, tell me about the, the relevance, uh, where relevance is a, a principle of, of critical thinking. Right, um, I mean, to, to my mind, critical thinking is what you should do every day, all mm. day. I mean, I get up in the morning and I read the newspaper and of course, very often I find some very uncritical thinking there, right? Yes. Pieces of, of writing which are poor in, in many respects, but not least, um, evidence adduced for a claim, a, a general conclusion is drawn, but the evidence for that is very weak. Mm -hmm. And anybody reading it who had these kinds of skills that you learn in critical thinking or logic classes can immediately see, oh, that doesn't follow, that those premises don't, don't actually justify that conclusion. And, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and uh -huh. that's, so that, it's quite relevant. I yeah. mean, what, whatever the subject matter, the, these canons of reasoning have to be borne in mind. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I mean, that's the point. Otherwise, you have a serious risk of arriving at something that's false or saying something that's false and potentially misleading other people into believing something that's false, which yeah. might be worse because yeah. then, of course, they might act on the belief you've shared with them 
<laughs> and then that would lead to <laughs> really a professor terrible. Professor of, uh, of philosophy. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I wanted to let my audience know that you have uh, ac accepted the chair at uh -huh. Catholic University. Yeah. And um, and congratulations well, on thank that. You. I want to publicly uh, uh, say that to you. Thank you. Um, another idea that that uh, that that Richard Paul puts forward is depth. He said that sometimes he said that sometimes questions. Uh, and discussions can be superficial, mm -hmm. uh, so much so that they can be misleading and you don't get to the depth of a particular answer. Uh, example he gave was the answer to drug addiction was to say no. And he said that the answer, of course, is very superficial. And of course, uh, drug has a tremendous drug. Drug addiction has an economic problem. <laughs> there, there is political problems involved. There is, mm -hmm. there is policing problems involved. Uh, so there is a lot of problems. So the simple answer of just say no is not sufficient mm -hmm. uh, in in this example. But That's tell true. me about the depth. Then. That's right. I mean, if you um, if you take fairly simple um, approaches to Economic problems, for mm -hmm. example, in, mm -hmm. in the present uh, present day in the middle of the country, which is where I'm from originally, grew up west of Pittsburgh. Yes, it's a very complicated problem there, right? Because you have people who were formerly fairly not affluent, but fairly well off in terms of middle, lower middle class lifestyles. They were able to be be well ensconced in those, and now that's all fallen away mm -hmm. because the manufacturing jobs have gone away. Yes, largely in the last 30 or, or 40 years. Um, those problems cannot be readily cured if they're not fully diagnosed and analyzed. Yes. So if you don't yes. get to the sources of the difficulty, I mean, one difficulty was people asking, for example, for raises, even though what would have been better off, in retrospect, we can all see, would have, would have been investment in the technology and alternative training, yes. uh, you know, yes. educational courses, sure. um, which people took the dollar raise, rather, you know. So there are all kinds of factors that entered into why things went the way they, were, they went. So mm -hmm. a really simplistic analysis would say, let's just bring them back yes. as if it was like a light switch. Well, obviously, it's uh, not like a light switch. Yes, it, yes. Won't come, it won't come back overnight just because you've changed a few things. It's going to require careful analysis, in-depth analysis, and then very studied, uh, measured steps mm -hmm. that have been right, shown to be effective to bring back certain elements in that area, so right? to, to economically. Make, so to, to make America great again, it's, it's, it's very simplistic. Very guess. simplistic, yes. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not gonna all happen overnight. It's not a matter of just one or two policies changing. Yes, I mean, yes. some of the things mentioned are indeed problematic, yeah. um, but uh, how to cure them and how to, how to address those issues is, is really hard, much yeah. harder. And, and so an in-depth analysis would which, which show that the situation is much more complex. Mm -hmm. And maybe uh, things you would not expect w to work are in fact gonna be worth yeah. trying because they're more likely to succeed than other measures, mm -hmm. right? So what is the, resu uh, what is the result of, of uh, poor analytical uh, skills, just poor rationality? What happens to an individual and a society when that continues to be unaddressed? Well, I mean, ultimately people don't know what's true, right? right. And then they start acting on falsehood. Right. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you, 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 know, you, th you think about the the man who was somehow induced to believe there was some kind of, uh, I forget, I think it was a child uh, child snatching ring over at a pizza shop here in Washington D.C. He he acts on that eventually, yes, right? Yes, I mean, yes. a complicated situation because he was apparently following a certain string of information on the internet, and somehow they had convinced him that this was all real. He went over there with a gun apparently and uh. tried to try to put a stop to the ring because no one else was. I mean. This shows you the ultimate impact of falsehood. Mm -hmm. That if if if, it's, if falsehoods are repeated in a believable or persuasive form, they become pernicious, right? Mm -hmm. Now the the, the the whole process of reason, and rationale, and reason and logic, uh, and you know when we talk about these things, I don't know why the phrase rationalized insanity comes to mind, <laughs> but 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 people actually set an object and then they use their tools to get to an insanity, you know. Uh, they're, they're, they're doing all the forms correctly, you know, mm -hmm. the logistics and, uh, uh, and, and the forms correctly, the, the rational forms correctly, but their object uh, is, is one of uh, total, total insanity. Uh, so, uh, or, or doesn't have any base in reality, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that perhaps, uh, so it's true, um, 
based on the object on the objective you know mm -hmm. they they want to go to this objective so everything that they think is correct to go or to get to the objective but the the objective is insane so uh, so I'm, I'm just saying uh, you give an example like on a terrorist to kind of uh, uh, yeah, yeah yeah that's okay, a right. very good example yeah, okay yeah all right so I mean there clearly the the end for the sake and the, all you're saying is that they've calculated properly how to about how to bring about the effect I mean 9-11 yes. is a good example right they yeah. calculated very carefully how the planes had to be full with with the fuel et cetera, mm -hmm. and they had that was why they had to land them in relatively short distances out or direct them back to mm -hmm. distances you know places on the east coast where they could hit them quickly otherwise there wouldn't be enough fuel to cause maximal damage so there's mm -hmm. ends mean, means ends reasoning there uh -huh. okay but i mean that, in this case the end is of course abhorrent right yes, okay yes, so yes. Yes, you can use good reasoning to be, you know, there's such a thing as a very good robber, right? Yes, right. <laughs> Robbing is a very bad thing. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so, yes, of course you can. Uh, but, yes. um, but there we get into a different, different dimension, namely okay, the okay. evaluation of the ends for the sake of which we act, yes. which is properly part of moral philosophy. I got you. Questions. And it's got its own canons of reasoning, right? We yeah. could go into that too. But I think more generally you can say uh, this about um, people when they reason in that fashion, they're... They never ask themselves the critical questions about is this a good end? Mm, That's yes, the. I mean, there's another yes. level of questioning. They yes. they're very good at figuring out the means to the end, mm -hmm. of, and alternative means, and you know, eliminating less efficient or whatever. Uh -huh. But they're not really good about asking the worthiness of the end. That is not a question they pose for themselves. Yes, yes. Very often. It, yeah. It, that's that is. You know, I really wanted to kind of get down to motivation. Um, what can motivate a person to apply these tools? What, what do you think is a good motivating factor? Uh, or if, if it's universal at all, I, I don't know. If it right, is well, I mean, I think here the analogy with, with something like communication skills is mm. pretty strong, right? You, why should you learn to, to for example, yes. write properly, write yes. the proper English, write yes. proper paragraphs? Um, the answer is because if you do that, then you can communicate much more effectively. Mm. Well, it's, there's an analogous answer in this case. Why should I bother with critical thinking skills? The answer is because then I can reason mm -hmm. more properly yeah. and I can have a better chance of arriving at truth. It's not guaranteed, but I have a much better chance. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, if I've also picked up communication skills, I can communicate that truth to other people. So mm -hmm. it's better for me as an individual, but also better for the community of which I'm a member because, uh, and also when people say things which are false, I can say, well, you know, what's the basis for that? You know, I love and, it. Then, and then uh -huh. the whole cycle of creating a community of inquirers who've, who are exercising these skills gets mm -hmm. started. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so the desire has to, st it has to be an inward desire and these, these tools actually help people to get there. That's right, yes, that's sir. right. And I appreciate that sure. very much and that's exactly what we wanted the Scholars Chair to do this evening. Tell me, what is a good book that you would recommend for a student uh, to examine critical thinking further? Uh, well, I mean, besides Richard Pauls, <laughs> yes. Um, well, I mean, there's some some good general books um, on logic. Um, mm -hmm. Professor Copey has a very good book. Yes. Um, it's a very old now, but it's still a very good book. Um, Professor Kelly has a good book. I'm in the process of pu publishing my own book, but it's on deductive logic. So, oh, good. Yeah. Good. So, um, but uh, yes, I mean, there's some very good books out there on critical thinking as a skill. How to promote it, you know, in, in developing your reasoning, mm -hmm. and um, it is worth the while to, to take a course if you can. Yes, uh, yes. And some of them, actually, some very good courses on logic online. Yes. As I found out, my younger son is a PhD in public health science, and he pointed out to me there are several such uh, uh, courses for free now on the internet. Perfect. Yeah. You know, this is this is giving our audience guidance, and I deeply appreciate it, sure. uh, Dr. Newman, for sharing your wealth of knowledge with us. We've been exploring the contemporary relevance of critical thought and rationality with Dr. Timothy Noon from Catholic University. You can get more of uh, Scholar's Chair and lectures online uh, at Read One Communications. I am Khalil Shadid. Good night. Amazing.
I understand. I know it's not your typical resume. Okay, well. But candidate. But I've been working double shifts just to pay for books. I've been raising my two little brothers. I'm determined, driven, motivated. Isn't that what you're looking for? Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent at gradsoflife.org.